Good morning, ladies. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Bolton with Live Healthy, Be Happy. I'm here today with you to talk about baby brain. What is it? And how does it work? And why do we have it? We hear all of these um, things about baby brain. So I'm excited to talk about that. Um, and well, I'm just going to share this with my lovely group of ladies um, who I support, who are, many of them are struggling with postpartum depression and anxiety or just challenges after birth. Um, share this with them so they get all this wonderful, <clears throat> wonderful information about baby brain. So if you're watching the replay, feel free to let me know um, about baby brain. What do you know about baby brain? What are your experiences with baby brain? And if you want to join my group and you're on my Facebook page, click the link above the top of the page and you can join. Um, if you have anybody you know in your life who may be struggling after having a baby, feel free to share this video. So we have shared it. Perfect. So baby brain. Baby brain is such a fascinating topic. Um, the more I learned about it, the more I found it very interesting. So the term baby brain kind of has a bit of a negative context in today's society. Or like pregnancy brain. We think dumb, stupid, um, we're forgetful, all these things. Which... To a certain degree, yes, baby brain does change your cognitive function, but it's also good, and there's a reason why we get this stuff, and I'll explain that. Um, so it's there is a positive side to um, the baby brain. I know it's uh, it's hard to <laughs> hard to fathom that, right, with all the forgetfulness and loss of cognitive function. But um, so one of the things I thought of last night as um, my daughters were both waking up is I was laying in bed and I know since becoming a mom one of the biggest things that I've noticed is I'm much more of a light sleeper so it's been like um, you know you wake up when baby cries you're just more sensitive to hearing noises in the house um, I'm just going to turn that off just so that it keeps my internet connection connected because I've been having troubles with that lately. So, um, so that, so anyway, so last night, um, the girls are waking up and they both sleep in their own, own room now. Um, and sometimes the little one comes, comes and wanders into the, the bedroom in the night. And she woke up and, and she told me, well, the kitties are, the kitties are bugging me. So we have some kitties. I'm not sure if you've seen, but sometimes in the morning they're here attacking my curtain and attacking my computer and whatever else. And so she asked me to close the door, which was cool. So we did that. But the reason um, I'm telling you this is because if I was, my brain hadn't changed to being more of a light sleeper, being more aware um, it's like a, it's a safety mechanism, right? I may not hear what's going on as the girls are wandering around the house or if in the night or whatever's going on. So it's a safety mechanism. It's to protect our young ones, to make sure that they're safe through the night, to make sure that they're um, still doing okay. So if something happens, we're able to wake and we're able to protect and able to make sure that they're safe. So that's, that's one of the changes um, in our brains. It, we become more aware of our surroundings and more able to um, connect with those situations that come up, right? So that's one thing, and that's my story of last night, how that went. Um, so it is a good thing. So if you imagine analogy of a filing cabinet, so when you're when you're pregnant and when baby's born, what happens is um, it's kind of like your brain is a filing cabinet. So all the files are there and they're all placed in order and it kind of gets dumped out. The whole thing gets dumped out and all the files kind of go everywhere. And then when end it, what ends up happening is it has to start refiling itself back in and some things get taken away and some things get left behind. Now some of those things that get taken away are things like cognitive function, so memory. So we start after 
we have a new baby, sometimes we have a hard time with memory. And that's where we get the negative connotation of baby brain, of it being a bad thing because we start to like the me the meme I shared in the group was forgetting your cell phone while you're talking on the cell phone like things like that happen to me all the time and we just gotta laugh it off and <laughs> keep moving on because we've got better files put in those places of that filing cabinet better things that get put back in and things that are more important as mothers so we become um, more compassionate, more caring, more empathy. So more of that empathy gets put back in place from that that um, cognitive loss, which is okay. Um, you know, as a new mom, you want to be connecting with your baby. You want to be bonding. You want that oxytocin, that love hormone to be connecting. You don't want to be necessarily, you know, studying for your PhD or anything because it's not really beneficial right after you have baby. Um, maybe you do, but that's not necessarily um, helpful. So um, you may have heard the myth that there's 10% of your brain that you use. Well, that's totally a myth. I remember remember hearing that years ago and thinking, well, that's kind of weird. Why would we have this giant brain and only use part of it? Like, just kind of strange. But that's been debunked, and we do use 100% of our brain, so the whole part of your brain is being used. Um, so that was what I wanted to say. And then hox oxytocin, we all have oxytocin, male, female, everybody, all mammals have oxytocin and that's the love hormone. And that's the part that, um, if we get lots of oxytocin, it can be a very good thing. So, um, 